Hello, and welcome to session one of the newly diagnosed webinar series. In this session, we will be discussing some introductory information about inflammatory bowel disease. Within this session, we will be reviewing the gastrointestinal system. We'll, we will be talking about inflammatory bowel disease and what it is. We will be talking about the causes and incidence of inflammatory bowel disease and some of the complications that will result. So to review the gastrointestinal system, it's also called the digestive system. And this system is what's altered in those of us who have inflammatory bowel disease. So when we take in food, we take in food through our mouth and it's transported through our esophagus to our stomach. And in our stomach, that is where the digestive process begins. Our stomach secretes acids and starts to break down the foods that we have eaten. From there, food travels to our small intestine. And the small intestine is not so small. It's about 15 feet long. And its job is to absorb the nutrients from the food that we eat. So when the disease is active in our small intestines, so that is um, specifically to Crohn's disease, that can result in nutritional deficiencies. So we'll talk a bit more about that later on. Uh, once the food or waste in this case as, has traveled through the small intestine, it then moves into the large intestine. And the large intestine is uh, not so large. It is three to four feet long. And its job is to absorb water. And so when, the, when inflammatory bowel disease is active within the large intestine, and it can be with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, there's less opportunity for our body to absorb that water. And so it can contribute to loose, watery stools. What is inflammatory bowel disease um, or IBD? It is an umbrella term for two diseases which cause inflammation of the bowel. So with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, um, what's common amongst these two diseases is that there's that inflammation in the bowels. So uh, redness, swelling, ulcers. Uh, and so that's the common de denominator. And this inflammation disrupts your body's ability to digest food, to absorb nutrients, and to eliminate waste in a healthy manner. Now what's different between the two, uh, we'll talk first about Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease can affect anywhere in the GI tract. So they say from gum to bum, so from mouth to anus, it can affect any portion of that GI tract. And this in inflammation goes through all layers of the bowel wall. And so that's why we see, uh, and we'll talk about complications that can occur with Crohn's disease, but it's because of those, the all layers of the bowel wall are inflamed and altered. With ulcerative colitis, um, this disease only occurs in the large intestine, rectum, and anus. So it's the lower half of the intestinal system. And it's only the innermost bowel layers that are affected as well. And I should say for Crohn's disease, um, that inflammation can be very patchy. So it can, we can have alternating areas of healthy um, tissue and mixed with um, inflamed or diseased tissue. So it's very spotty or patchy. They call it a, a cobblestone appearance. With ulcerative colitis, the disease works its way from the bottom through the large intestine. And so it's a continuous motion. The disease occurs in a continuous um, motion or stream through the large intestine. Canada has one of the highest rates of inflammatory bowel disease in the world with over 270,000 Canadians living with the disease. And uh, the new research is suggesting that um, these numbers will continue to increase. Um, so up, you know, by 2030, there will be an estimated uh, 400,000 400, Canadians who are living with IBD. Uh, there in, um, in children, these rates are also increasing. 
So currently around 7,000 children have inflammatory bowel disease and that number has doubled in the last 10 years. Uh, what we are expecting uh, and the research is predicting is that by 2030 that number will double again in children with IBD. So that number is increasing. There are more individuals living with Crohn's disease than ulcerative colitis, as you can see on the screen there. What causes IBD? Well, the short answer is we are not sure. It is a combination of these factors that are listed on the screen here. So what happens is um, there are individuals, because of their genetic makeup, are more likely to develop inflammatory bowel disease than others. And research is looking into what particular genes these might be, um, but right now, um, you know, there are some individuals who are more likely to develop the disease. And these individuals are exposed to something in the environment. We're not, not sure what that something in the environment is. Um, it could be viruses, bacteria, um, it could be um, exposure to toxins in um, inhaled toxins, it could be, you know, it could be a whole variety of things. They are not sure. But these genetically um, predisposed individuals are exposed to something in the environment. And that something in the environment then alters the gut microbiome. And the gut microbiome is a community of microorganisms that live in the digestive system that maintain our digestive health and they're, they're, they're good bacteria. We want them in our digestive system. And for individuals who have inflammatory bowel disease, that gut microbiome is disrupted in some way. And again, more research is, is um, looking at what the gut microbiome is and how it affects um, IBD. But we know that our gut microbiome is affected by something from the environment. And what happens then is it triggers this abnormal immune response. So the inflammation occurs within the body and the body starts to attack its own cells within the digestive system. So that is a very complex relationship um, and that is their, their um, uh, you know, most educated guess at that point as to what causes IBD. What's, what's really important to remember though for those of you who are newly diagnosed is that there's no way to prevent uh, getting IBD. So there's nothing that you could have um, done or not done to prevent getting it at this point. So it's nothing you did or didn't do. Who gets IBD? It affects all age groups. Uh, there are two peak periods, so uh, between 15 and 30, and then again between your, um, the age of 50 and 70. Um, it affects both genders equally. However, more women uh, are likely to be diagnosed with Crohn's disease than men. There is a, a relationship of, of family history of the disease. So for those um, of you who have a blood relative, or if you have a blood relative with IBD, you're 20% more likely to develop the disease yourself. And then finally, in terms of ethnicity, it can affect all ethnicities. However, those who have a Jewish heritage are at greater risk for developing IBD. And now we're seeing some changes in terms of individuals who have immigrated to Canada. And so individuals who have um, immigrated to Canada and they have children, those children are just as likely uh, to develop IBD than children who are, um, and families who have lived in Canada their entire lives. So we're seeing some immigration changes as well. So, so first-generation Canadian-born children have a similar risk uh, as compared to those children born from non-immigrant parents. We are seeing inflammatory bowel disease in countries where we haven't seen it before. So countries like Asia, Africa, and in South America, um, they have reported a rise in inflammatory bowel disease. And the research, you know, they propose it's related to the urbanization and westernization of those, um, of those countries or within those countries. Very briefly, I'm going to talk about some of the complications that individuals with IBD may see. 
and they can be broken into two um, categories, intestinal complications and non-intestinal complications. So intestinal complications are more common for individuals who have been diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And these include things like abscesses, so these are pockets of infection, um, fistulas, these are abnormal uh, tunnelings between intest the intestine and somewhere else in the body, and obstructions, so these are a, a narrowing or a blockage of the stool passageway. And so they, um, like I said, are more common in Crohn's disease, and you may or may not need surgery to treat these complications. Non-intestinal complications, uh, there are a few listed there as well. The first one is nutritional deficiencies. So because your body, your GI system, is to absorb the nutrients that we eat and eliminate wastes in a, in a healthy way, um, if, if our intestinal system is damaged or inflamed, we may not be able to absorb those nutrients that, from the foods that we take in. So malnutrition can be quite common and even dehydration. So if you are losing a lot of water through your stools, um, it's, it's much more easy to become dehydrated as well. There are some inflammatory processes happening in the body outside of the intestinal system, and so that's where we will see things such as joint disease. So things like um, arthritis, uh, and of both the small joints, so we'll say in the hands and the, and the feet, but also the large joints, the spine, the hips, the knees. Um, so joint disease or arthritis is, is more common in, in patients who have Crohn's disease or um, ulcerative colitis. Uh, there's also skin conditions that, um, inflammatory skin conditions. So things like psoriasis or um, pyoderma gangrenosum as well. Uh, other inflammation um, can happen in the body such as your eyes as well. Um, and even in your bile ducts, so your di again, your digestive system, um, it's a condition called primary sclerosing cholangitis. So that's a, a disease of the bile ducts and can lead to inflammation and scarring and liver damage. So those are a few of the intestinal and non-intestinal complications. And this brings us to the end of the first webinar session on Introduction to Inflammatory Bowel Disease. Please feel free to visit the other sessions um, as well. Thank you.